Hello, everybody. Welcome to our 10th lecture. This is probabilistic risk analysis. Uh, it's another method for dealing with uncertainties in our project assumptions. It is chapter 12 in our book, for those of you following along in that book. And let's get started. There is an associated Excel example that you can watch afterwards. So, what is probabilistic risk analysis? Given a range of outcomes with varying probabilities associated with those outcomes, we can evaluate the risk associated with a project. So now, basically, instead of saying something like, we have a salvage value assumed of $30,000 at the end of the project life, we can say, all right, this time there's a 50% chance that there's a salvage value of $30,000 associated with the project, there's a 10% chance that there's no salvage value associated with the project, uh, and, and so on. So we can assign associated probabilities to different outcomes and then see how the decision to move forward or not move forward with the project would change based on those assigned probabilities. So let's do an example. Say you have a small premixed concrete plant with very various capacity utilizations. So what we have here is a table. This is capacities. So this is the capacity the plant is operating at. So 90% capacity is obviously closer to full capacity and you would expect higher annual revenues. If it's operating at 50% capacity then you would expect to not be making as much money because you're not operating at a high capacity. So basically what this has is four discrete capacities um, and ass assigned probabilities associated with each capacity. So there's a 10% chance that the plant is operating at 50% capacity. There's a 30% chance it's operating at 65% capacity. 50% chance it's operating at 75% capacity. And then 10% chance it's operating at 90% capacity. These are discrete probabilities associated with specific capacities. You may also hear of continuous distributions as opposed to discrete. And an example of continuous distribution is a probability distribution for any value between 50% and 90%. So say the plant could operate at 50%, but it could also operate at 52.3% if we want. So that's what continuous probability is. We're going to only focus on discrete today. Um, so each of these outcomes has an associated annual worth. As you'd expect, if it's operating at lower capacity, the annual worth is lower. And we want to quantify the fact that there is a small chance, 10% chance, that the annual worth of a project that you move forward with is negative, but it is also potentially very lucrative as well. So let's figure out how to do some risk analysis. The first term or value that you need to know is the expected value of a discrete outcome. And basically, this is a weighted average. So what you're going to do is multiply the value of the outcome by the probability of the associated outcome. And you're going to do that for each of the possible outcomes and then sum them up. So basically, we have a weighted average of our values based on their probabilities. So you can see for 50%, probability is 0.1 annual worth is negative $25,000 and a few extra. So that is our first term. The second term, 65% capacity, has a 30% chance of happening. Associated annual worth, and so on. What we do is we get $41,000 and a little extra. So on average, we would expect to earn $41,000 on this project. And that is Basically, you can see that there's no outcome where you earn $41,000. You are expecting this, if you were, say, to run this 100 times. If you could build 100 different plants and they all had the same associated probability, on average, you would be summing all that up, and on average, you would make $41,000. Uh, so this, this value can't happen, but it shows that we are still expected to make money based on this project. Because really, there's a 90% chance that we earn money 
and a 10% chance that we lose money, and we would expect on a given run to make $41,028. So the next thing that we want to learn is the standard deviation. Standard deviation is a way to describe how spread out certain outcomes are. So we know that the mean is positive, but we might want to know how likely we are to be close to the mean. And what a small standard deviation means is that you are going to be close to your expected value, and a large standard deviation means that you would expect to see outcomes that are far away from your expected value on either side, not necessarily one-sided. So the way to calculate standard deviation, outcome squared times the associated probability, sum those up, subtract it from the expected value squared, and take the square root. So calculating standard deviation, I'm going to show you how to do that in Excel, but the standard deviation here is 31,000. $364. Now this is less than the mean, so what that would do is, according to the book, they would say that the project is probably worth pursuing because you are likely to have a value greater than zero with within one standard deviation. Uh, if you want, you can calculate the actual probability of your project being lower than zero by using expected value and standard deviation, uh, assuming a certain distribution we're not going to discuss that further, but it is out there and you may need to do that or encounter that in your uh, jobs in the future. So some other ways to evaluate risk, uh, simulate it. Basically, if there's a ton of random variables uh, in a complex problem, you can simulate and you know choose random outcomes for everything and then see how the uh, the total value works out for a variety of different simulated outcomes. Decision trees are similar. They help you evaluate all possible outcomes. They can get very large if there's lots of different choices or outcomes, but the way they work is basically you make a tree and say if this happens, then you go up the tree, and if something else happens, you go down the tree, and then you try it for continuing possible outcomes. And then there's also a real option analysis described in the book, which sort of takes decision trees to a further level. You won't need to do any of these in this class, and they likely will not be on the FE exam, but you should just know that they're out there. So that's about it. Don't forget to look at the Excel example. And, um, oh, and some ways to manage risk when you're at a company. You can choose project alternatives with low risk, so that is obviously up to you to decide how confident you are in your riskiness, and you can use past market trends, and knowing how volatile a market can be could, should tell you how risky uh, an assumption is. And another way companies frequently manage risk is to apply design contingencies, so basically just like when you're designing a bridge and applying a safety factor so that it can hold more load than it would normally be able to hold. This basically is just you're multiplying your expected project costs by a specific factor that is probably predefined by your company. So you might have like a 30% design contingency. So you just assume all costs are going to be 30% more and then evaluate the project that way. Uh, so now that's it, and uh, don't forget to check out the Excel example. Thanks.